Uh, we're here in Albany to kick off the national drive sober or get pulled over uh, alcohol and impaired driving awareness campaign. Uh, law enforcement will be out statewide and across the nation from August 18th to September 5th. It's the uh, national crackdown to uh, have enforcement out to try to d deter impaired driving. Well, in New York State, we have seven or eight crackdown periods, but Labor Day is one of those periods where uh, there's a tendency for more people to be out drinking and driving. Alcohol-related uh, crashes in New York State are about a third, so a third of our fatalities, a third of our crashes are alcohol-related. Um, and those numbers are staying fairly constant, but the impaired driving by drugs numbers are starting to go up. We're up about 300 in New York State from 2014 to 2015, so we're seeing more impairment by prescription medications and illegal drugs. Uh, our son Christopher was taken from us on December 1st, 2012 um, by a uh, drunk, high-speeding texting driver. And, um, you know, a day hasn't come, gone by that we don't think about Christopher um, and the pain that we constantly go through, but we feel it's pretty important to speak at different events and uh, keep the awareness um, out there to people as to what's going on and the problems with our roads these days. Our son Chris was 17 at the time of the crash that took him from us. Chris was a senior in high school. He was um, the captain of his football team. He had played from kindergarten straight on through uh, 12th grade and he was fortunate enough to make captain of the team his senior year. So that was the sport that he enjoyed the most. Uh, he was very active with friends and with a part-time job and he had a girlfriend and was looking forward to college. We were right smack in the middle of college applications at the time of the crash. And, um, you know, all those shining, happy moments in life, you know, where we were right in the midst of it all with Chris, um, helping him prepare himself for his future and what did he want to do in college and what did he want to do after college. Uh, all of those wonderful things that a family would ordinarily do with their child, we were right in the midst of when this crash occurred. So uh, for us to have lost Chris, any time in life when a person loses their child is um, just traumatic and unconscionable and hard to deal with. But boy, we were right smack in the middle of a high with Christopher, uh, going through all the things in life that were enjoyable and watching him with his, uh, become independent. He had his first car. So he was really kind of spreading his wings and we were watching that happen and see all that unfold was truly magnificent. But uh, unfortunately, this crash took him from us. We feel we owe it to Christopher to speak at these events. Um, you know, we speak, we feel good about it, but then we, when we go home um, or back to work, we feel the emptiness um, and the sadness that comes with that. But um, you know, we feel it's important to not only speak to uh, the students to make them aware of uh, making good choices, uh, but at the same time, I, I feel it's extremely important to t speak to the parents because as many young offenders as we have on the road, we have much more older people um, and parents. We feel not only obligated, but we feel um, good and feel a goodness to speak um, on behalf of Christopher uh, just to let people know that it doesn't always happen to somebody else. When time passes, and it's coming up on four years for us that we've lost Chris, his name doesn't come up very much anymore. Uh, and, and that's for probably a multitude of reasons. Sometimes people don't want to mention him because they think we're going to, it will just drum up emotion in us. But we, he's always on our mind. Our son never leaves our mind, so nobody's going to bring something to our attention that we don't already know and, and think about. But I know personally for myself, I like to speak because I love to talk about my son. I love to talk about both of my sons. And I'll talk about them to anyone that'll listen for any length of time that they're willing to listen. And that doesn't happen as often with Chris anymore. So when we speak, although we're telling the story of Christopher's life and that goes from his birth to his death, we have a new audience to talk to, and we have a new audience that we can share our son with to explain what a real 
and caring and sweet person he was, but also to share the story that this kind of thing can happen and we really want to prevent it from happening to another family. We'll never be able to express to anybody the tremendous pain and the grief that's felt when this happens because I don't think anyone can experience it unless they've gone through it. It's kind of like a new emotion that you didn't even know was out there because not everyone can feel it or will feel it. But for those of us that do and have, I think it's important for us to be there for another family that probably will eventually go through it, but also to share the story in hopes of prevention. A drug recognition expert is an officer that has specific training um, in observing signs and symptoms of drug impairment. So if we have a subject that is arrested for either a low BAC or they're still showing signs of impairment that aren't consistent with that BAC, then we would be called in to do um, a 12-step evaluation on that individual and we're used to determine what category or categories of drugs that person is impaired by. Finding more and more that people are impaired by either their medications or illicit type drugs, um, in addition to alcohol, they're just as dangerous as people who are drinking or intoxicated by alcohol on the road. And every time I either arrest somebody on my own or I assist another agency in doing an evaluation for them, I know I'm making a difference by taking that person off the road, possibly saving somebody's life. It's very important for the state police because we are a crucial uh, part of the enforcement effort which takes place in New York State with our partner agencies at the uh, local uh, and county level to combat impaired driving. We'll have checkpoints, we'll have uh, additional directed patrols for DWI enforcement, but uh, particularly important to us is to get the word out prior to a campaign like that so that people understand how important the issue is and what we're going to be doing about it. We stress enforcement for safety reasons on speed, seat belts and distracted driving now because of texting and driving and using phones and driving. Uh, but yes, with an emphasis on drug and, uh, drug and drunk driving. Obviously campaigns like this, where I said we do get the word out prior, we would prefer if we never had to arrest a person again, if everybody complied with the laws related to, to drunk and, and impaired driving. Um, but that's not the case. And so enforcement does constitute a very important part of the, the campaign.